Oops. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Have you ever had that happen where a chisel falls off the bench or something else happens to it and you get this really bad nick in the chisel? Uh, I want to kind of go through sharpening today. Now in my book there are two different types of sharpening. There is the, oh no, I've got a nick in my blade and I have to take off a good amount of material. And that's when I take it to a crank grinder or a piece of sandpaper and we'll be covering that. Then there's the regular sharpening. There's no nick in it, it's just gotten dull. And what do I want to do to maintain the edge and keep it going? So I want to look at several things and uh, give you a, quite a few little tips and ideas and things that I do to make an edge really nice and sharp. Okay, so for the initial grinding, what I actually want to do is take off a lot of material and bring this edge into actual use. Uh, because if I feel this, I feel there are all sorts of nicks on it. If I look up close, there's a whole bunch of nicks in the blade itself. And I, I need to take off a good amount of material in order to get back to those nicks um, and eliminate them. And there's two basic ways. Number one, you can do it with a grinder. And here I actually have a, a hand grinder where I can mount this to a table, put a wheel on here and grind it. And I want to use this one of these days, I've just never gotten the wheel for it and uh, never put it up together. Uh, the other possibility, and the one that I generally use, is I get a belt sander, uh, one of these large belts, and then I cut it in half and I lay it out on the concrete. And I basically turn it into a grinder. So let's actually look at how I do this. So with this, I basically just get down on the floor and I'll needle on this strip. And I don't care if the concrete's perfectly flat or not, I'm just trying to get a general edge on this. And just like before, I'm gonna put one hand out here just to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna find that angle. I'm not looking for anything particular yet. And then I'm going to slowly grind it down. And I'm using very similar body mechanics to how I'm going to do it on the stones in a little bit. And I'm just gonna keep going on this until I get a nice clean edge all the way across. And I'll find that I have a burr that goes completely across the chisel. The other thing I'm trying to do here is I don't want to rock it too much. Um, a lot of people have a tendency to lower the handle out here, and when they get back here, the handle's up high. And so what you end up doing is rounding the end. I'm trying to keep the handle the same height off the ground the whole time. So as I come back, my body is moving and not the chisel as much. And it just takes a couple minutes of doing that and you'll get that really big heavy burr all the way across and it's ready to take over to the stones. So now that we've actually ground it down and we've gotten the shape that we're looking for, we need to actually hone this and bring this the point to a really nice fine edge because right now there's a big burr that's sticking up on there and that burr is going to cause um, a lot of issues you don't want to you don't want to cut with that <laughs> so i've got here um, a set of diamond plates these are dmt stones i'll leave a link to these down below um, i really like these over a whetstone they stay flat um, relatively and they uh, they the last for a long time you don't have to worry about keeping them wet i just use a simple glass cleaner to uh, keep them moist and they work really really well um, so I have a, um, an extra coarse, a fine, and then an extra fine. Um, in grits, this ends up being like a 1200 grit being my finest stone. Um, in diamonds, the grit don't really translate, so don't try and say that these are a grit, just call them by their name. Um, and then I've gotten this holder kind of from Paul Sellers, but I've also added on a, uh, a strop um, over here, so that way I can keep the same movement all the way through. I kind of like that, that setup. Uh, so if you want to see the video on how I made this, I'll leave a link to that down below as well. So I'm going to start with just a little bit. That's all I need. And then I'm going to come over here to this. So I'm going to set the back here, and you can see how I put two fingers from my non-dominant hand here, my pointer finger here, and then with my three fingers back here, I'm just going to lift this up. And so I'm not like holding this. I'm just holding, I'm just letting it rest on my fingers right here. I'm going to lift it up until I find that bevel. And then I'm just going to grind. Now I'm trying to lock, I'm trying to lock my wrist, my elbow, my shoulder, my hips, everything, so that my movement comes all the way down to my ankles. And so that my upper body isn't doing this. Because if I do this, I'm going to be rounding the head a lot more than I want. And I'm not really shooting for perfectly flat either. Um, the radius comes from all the way down to my ankles as opposed to my elbows. Uh, so it'll be a, a kind of a mix between a flat and a radius handle. And I'm going to do this for a little bit, 
until I can see the striations on here. And I can tell that I, um, I ground it with a little bit of a round over this way. So that means I'm hitting heavily here in the middle and not as much on the wings. So it's just gonna take a little bit longer here at the stone until I get, until I see those scratch patterns running all the way across. And you see how I work from one side all the way over to the other side, I'm trying to use the entire width. Also, sometimes it may get difficult to see your scratch pattern if you're always grinding in the same direction. So sometimes it gets useful to do something like this. So this takes a little bit more skill. And you can tell here I'm using more of my arms than my whole body. So I like to do that for a little bit and then come back to straight. But everyone's a little bit different. Everyone likes something different. Yeah, getting close. Got a little bit more to do on this tip over here. And just coming off of the grinder, this is going to take a little while. This may take, you know, four, five, ten minutes to uh, really get down. Okay, so now I have, I've got an even scratch pattern running all the way across. Um, I know that I have a nice clean edge. And what I want to do is I feel the back of this and I have an extremely heavy burr still left over from that. And I want to get rid of that burr. Because if you leave a heavy burr on there, it's going to slowly pull away the tip. So I'm just going to put it on here flat and I'll pull it back. Now you notice I'm not flattening the back of this because I've flattened it in the past. Um, so I'm not worrying about that as much. And then I'm just going to go back and forth a little bit until that burr comes really close to falling off. Here you can see the really heavy burr that's still on there. And so that is basically where I want to see. You can see the scratch pattern all the way across there. And you can see the scratch pattern all the way across there. And that's all I'm really looking for in this. So now that I've gotten that um, pretty much ground down, and I've got a really rough grit on here, um, I've gotten this to the shape I want it to be. Now generally, um, that's what I consider grinding. Um, and that will, you know, that if I were to take this burr off, I could probably carve with this, yeah, okay, not great. <laughs> Um, but from this point on, we're actually going to be doing the sharpening and honing. And basically, most of the time when I'm working at the bench, if I'm just cleaning up an edge, I'm just going to do from here on out. I rarely use this bottom stone again. So it's basically going to be the exact same movement, the exact same thing again that I was doing on this stone, except for I'm going to come up here to the medium. And I'm going to put in a new set of scratch patterns that I can watch. And just like before, I'm going all the way across the stone, trying to use the whole thing trying to lock my body so that my movement comes from my ankles. And I'll wipe it off and I'll check the scratch pattern. That's looking pretty good. So then I'm gonna do the back on this again. Now if I'm just honing and pulling it off from the stone, I'm probably not gonna do the back here. But because I ground it, I'm going to do the back and then this and the back and this and the back. And this is just going to work that burr because the burr is so stinking big right now. So I'm just going to keep working this until I get a really nice clean scratch pattern all the way across. And this should only take another minute or so. If I'm just doing this, freshening it up, it should only take, you know, 30, 40 strokes. And there, I've got a really nice clean scratch pattern all the way across. Next thing, move it on to the next stone. And we're going to do the exact same thing over again. You hear how the pitch of the stone actually gets higher? Uh, from one stone to the next. And we're just going to do the exact same thing here. Grind it down until we get a nice clean scratch pattern. In this case, I'm still going to do the back. I'm going to do the back a little bit more on here because this is the final stone. This is the polish I want on that back. Yep, that's looking good. Almost have all the scratch pattern on there. A little bit more. There we go. Okay, I've got that scratch pattern all the way across from all three stones, and now all I see is what I have left from the last stone. So now it's actually time to go on the strop. Now the strop here, this is horse butt um, leather. Um, there's a bunch of different places where you can get it. I'll try and leave a link to that below. Um, you can use any leather you want. I just look for a really stiff, heavy, hard leather. I'm going to keep the rough side up for mine. And then I have a honing compound on here. This is just a, a chrome oxide. You can use a zinc oxide or just about any buffing compound on there. And I'm going to start up here and I'm just going to pull back on this. Sometimes faster, sometimes slower. Depends on what I feel like. 
30, 40 strokes or so. Not looking for anything special. Just polishing out that edge and I can start to get that mirror finish that I like. And then I'm gonna pull in the back here. Now, when I'm just cleaning up an edge, I am going to have a small burr that's gonna come off. Now, because I lost that burr earlier, I'm not gonna get that tiny little wire edge. And so when I do the back and the front, I'll just kind of work it on here on the strop a few times until that burr falls off. In this case, I've got this really nice, highly polished edge all the way across. And that about does it. The only thing you have to do is actually to test it and make sure you are where you want to be. Now, there's a bunch of different ways of testing. A lot of people like to use uh, their thumbnail, um, and I like to you know peel off these tiny little curls. <laughs> um, some people like to use paper. Um, because I'm on camera, one of the best ways that I can actually tell people how to do it is to shave hair. And what you wanna do is be careful not to cut your arm. Um, but if you shave the hair, if it is really truly sharp, it will hit every single hair it touches on the very first pass. Then you won't have to come back to clean up anything. If it's somewhat sharp but still needs some more work, you're going to see a bunch of hairs that are still left. The more hairs you see left, the more work you still have to do. So yes, a dull blade can still cut hair, but a truly sharp blade is going to cut every single hair on the first pass. Let me show you what that looks like. This is called hand tool pattern baldness. You see how one pass cuts every hair there. And then come down a little farther and cut another pass. And then you get all that beautiful hair. <sighs> yep, it's sharp. So there you have it. A quick tutorial on how to sharpen, clean up an edge. And really, this is something that anyone can do. And now you can go and get a jig and make it simpler. And some people really like that. But for chisels, I really suggest people learn to do it freehand. Yes, it's going to take a little bit of practice. It's something you have to learn. But for a chisel, it's actually not that difficult once you learn the body mechanics and you learn to move with your ankles and not with your upper body. Um, you'll get a really nice clean edge fairly quickly. And once you learn to do it with a chisel, then you can start to learn to do freehand with other things, with your uh, plane blades and other items that are around the shop. I really hope that you have enjoyed this. This is a, a great thing to learn. And once you get a truly sharp edge, the world just suddenly opens up. And it's kind of cool what you can get. Um, woodworking is all about having a really clean, keen edge. And until you get that, you're going to be running into problems. So learning to sharpen really is the very first hand tool skill. I hope you like that. If you did, I want to say an incredible thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys really are the reason why I can put out videos like this. Also, if you want to subscribe, you can do that over here. If you want to see some behind the scenes footage and other things like that, you can do that right over here. And until next time, have a wonderful day.